All right, so uh, we start with the early church fathers in the post-apostolic uh, era, the challenges that confronted the um, burgeoning church as it spread throughout the Roman Empire required a new apologetic counterthrust. Rabbinic Judaism and uh, uh, fully developed uh, Gnosticism, persecuting pa uh, paganism and Hellenistic culture and philosophy all opposed the fledgling church. And uh, a really good book uh, by uh, the, the guy who I'm always going to talk about is uh, Michael J. Kruger, Christianity in the Second Century, uh, covers this really, really well on on kind of um, the, the the main thrust against the the church, especially from the Gnostic period, and showing um, the the non orthodox uh, um, uh, belief systems that were were attempted to be thrust onto the church mm -hmm. rather than oh they just suddenly appeared from within the church and. Uh, there was a war between the, the, the opposing parties and uh, orthodoxy won out because it's the thing that won. Well, All right. So they would they would obviously. produce these books and then throw a, a, an a apostle's name on it and right. say, well, there it is. Right. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. But the, the relig religious apologists defended Christianity against these attacks and sought to gain converts to the faith by arguing for the superiority of the Christian position. There were political apologists who argued that the church should be tolerated by the state. And uh, we see that going forward and <laughs> and uh, uh, Constantine's uh, names being brought up and then almost too often times Constantine's names brought up and the uh, ahistorical uh, 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 value <laughs> in some of that or some of the councils around that era uh, seem to uh, to uh, people uh, don't read the sources, but just want them to to, to be more powerful or Less powerful than what the what they really are. So, um, yeah. so even even from this uh, first position of <laughs> of really the second century uh, church, um, you're 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 um, being under attack both physically, uh, but also uh, the ideas are, are are coming out, and you you do see it in in places like Jude and and uh, some of the letters that John has of these uh, maybe uh, proto uh, Gnostic uh, uh, teachers coming in. Uh, but but, uh, but the the wolves in sheep clothing have been have been talked about uh, from Jesus' own mouth to the apostles, and we definitely see that um, coming about. And so uh, we we see the growth of the Christian church. And so with the growth comes people that want to overtake it. Exactly, attacks main, uh, many from within, right? In terms of uh, these types of things, and they, uh, so this is the period <clears throat> right after the apostles, right? So this is, we, we call this the early church fathers, right? So uh, and the, the apologists of the second century is the time period that we're talking about. Modeled their arguments, um, Boa and Bowman tell us, uh, after contemporary philosophical refutations of polytheism and the critiques of pagan philosophy by Hellenistic Jews. So these Jews were arguing against polytheism and pagan philosophy. And so the early Christian apologists modeled their arguments after, after these uh, Jewish kinds of arguments. Uh, of the many apologists from this period, the most important by far was Justin Martyr. So he was, <clears throat> they, they, uh, they, uh, uh, date him 100 to 165. He was a, con a convert to Christianity from Platonism. Uh, and in his dialogues with Trifo, the Jew, Justin used messianic prophecies from the Hebrew scriptures to prove that Jesus is the Messiah. Uh, in his two apologies, he appealed for the civil toleration of Christianity and argued that it was, in fact, the true philosophy. Right. So he uh, so he, he was uh, going against uh, the idea that this was some type of, you know, uh, wrong or cultic type of thing to show that Christianity should be tolerated. He refuted common errors and rumors, for example, that Christians were atheists. Right. Because they denied the deity of the, you know, of the of the uh, uh, Caesar or whatever. So they weren't atheists and they denied other gods, by the way. And he also, you know, refuted the idea that Christians ate flesh and drank blood, right? Because they did symbolically, but you know, the idea right. here was that they were they were cannibals, right? right? And he presented Christianity as a morally superior religion. So notice here there was lots of confusion with regard to what Christianity was all about. And so um, much of his apologetic was clearing up this particular confusion. 
right? No, we, Christians are not atheists. No, Christians don't eat flesh and blood, right? These are these were uh, confusions and uh, that uh, he fought against in his apologetic method. Yeah. Yeah. And just murdered uh, uh, <laughs> an unfortunate last name, uh, you know, the, yeah. <laughs> he really should have thought that one through, you know, <laughs> gone, gone through the legal channels to get that changed. <laughs> yeah. And, and so uh, we, we see this as, as uh, um, um, even in uh, secular history, the, 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 the charge that uh, there, there's these weird uh, Christians that are incestuous in some nature because they call each other brother and sister and, and they're uh, engaging in cannibalism. Uh, but also you have uh, these these uh, philosophers coming in and saying, yeah, but look at their lives and, and, and look at the good that they're doing. And when uh, when they when they go to uh, uh, prison, uh, they they have people that uh, that aren't in their family and they come and uh, bring them provisions. And uh, in my um, in one of my messages uh, that I've uh, posted on here before uh, to uh, the, high, uh, the high school group or the college group, high school group. Um, I, I gave a, a big quote on on um, uh, some of these testimonies of of the early Christians and showing that their lives were characteristic of people who were separate from the world that they were uh, that they were a, uh, used to be a part of, uh, but now they're a part of this this one family. And uh, here, even even your your uh, outward actions are seen as an apologetic and so um it's not just a a, a thing that you say or you know uh we, you know we, we can be uh, even better atheists than the atheist uh, uh we we join the ranks of of socrates who was also uh, considered an atheist because he uh he had just uh you know a, a one personal god uh you know associated with him and uh, that he denied um and so uh from from even the lives of the early church we see how they lived was an outward reflection of their apologetic 